Dr. Chungwan Lee will present today the research article. So we are going to do this kind of uh, eye train seminar every three, three times every week, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. So th this, this time is a kind of pra practice for, for all of us. Yeah, thank you for your presentation. So today I'm going to talk about cell stem cell paper written by uh, Kevin Charlotte. The title is Membrane Tension Gate Arc Mediated Regulation of Forbidden Stem Cell Fate. Before starting this this search paper, let's talk about this ERM structure. So many people doesn't uh, don't know about this ERM for me as well. I'm not familiar with this, with this so I study. So let's see. This ERM is abbreviation of azurin, radicin, and moicin are encoded by three different genes that seem to each give rise to a single protein. The protein shows some tissue specificity. For example, azurin is most abundant in epithelial cell, moicin, endothelial cell, radicin, hepatocyte. So ERM shares striking amino acid identity, but a few notable features suggest that there is a possible functional diversity which means they have very similar function with different structure. So let's look at the ERM structure. Basically, ERM protein consists of these two parts. One is FERM domain. The other one is affecting binding site. So as a protein level, they describe like this. Here, they only mention azurin, but you can imagine other protein as well. So, so this is a plasma membrane. And then this ERM protein, one side, this FERM domain can bind plasma cell membrane with this PTD anositor phosphorylation site here. And then another effect binding site really binding to the effect here. Okay, so this is the role of the ERM protein to link cell membrane and affecting. So this effect is not just affecting. This is we can say that cortex affecting structure near the membrane. Okay, and then some EBP50 and PDJK1 can bind this FERM domain site of ERM protein to stabilize this cell membrane and affecting structure. And then in case of myosin, we already know that myosin heavy chain or light chain, they mentioned that in case of cortex affecting near the cell membrane, myosin 1 is abundant. So myosin 1 is below, they have some effect in here. So this kind of myosin 1 affecting an ERM and cell membrane structure can give, can determine total cell membrane tension. And then you can see this uh, dormant azurin and EBP50 and PDJK1. Dormant means uh, non-active status. When they are non-active, they didn't spread out. They just maintain this localized structure, but when they are activate or tension, they spread out like this, all of this protein. So, and then people will ask, what is if FERM domain? In bio, bio molecule, and molecular biology, FERM domain consists of 4.1 protein, azurin, radicin, and moicin. Widespread protein modulated involving localizing protein to the plasma membrane. So, this, this FERM is also saying that this protein can literally 
contact to the cell membrane. Okay, so this is an ERM structure introduction. And then when we look at the what kind of function they have, ERM, for example, from the O side polarity, this this or moiety, this is called ERM protein. It helping helping for stabilizing O side polarity. Use using OSCA mRNA binding and affecting alignment. And then in case of mitosis, this is the interphase and this is the mitosis phenomenon. In interphase status, ERM doesn't spread out, effect is not aligned, but we can see many membrane break inside. So here they also mentioned that when you see the 3D or 2D structure, membrane breathing, which is whole marker of low, co low cortical tension, low cell membrane tension. But when they start to do mitosis, this ERM protein is spreading out, connecting to the affecting a line, and also microtuber is involved. So this is status of high cortical tension. And then when you see the undifferentiated cell and epithelial cell, like kind of differentiated differentiate cell, finally. In undifferentiated cell, also you can see low cortical tension cause the cell membrane, they are folded. This is a marker of low cortical tension. And then, which is from non-aligned affecting structure, and then this ERM protein doesn't bind correct, correctly. But when they are differentiated into the finer epithelial cell, the cell membrane is tensioned so they can do spread out. And then ERM protein spread out to link affecting, as well as other junction, like that. Then when you see the immunological synapse, which is T cell and antidepressant cell, also, this ERM structure is very important to bind APC, MHC class 2, and then T cell, T cell receptor binding. So, this ERM protein spreading, affecting, and other job 70 and CD43, all this kind of structure is helping for binding the APC to transmit some signal. So people mention a lot, the ERM structure is very important to regulate the cell fate. I just have a simple question okay. about the ERM. Right. So ERM dormant, in the dormant state, mm -hmm. they kind of fold it, right? Yes. So what caused that conformational changes? Is uh, that cellular membrane tension or what causes that conformational changes? Yeah, that's a very good question, but I cannot answer. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, yeah. Okay, and then, the, uh, so one thing I'm missing is that this bite size, bite size is recruiting myosin, one of the ERM protein, to apical domain. Apical domain means near the cell membrane to make connection. So which can, we can say that bite size is some kind of recruiter of ERM protein to stabilize the cell membrane tension. So I, I don't know how this ERM is unfolded. This is because of actin and cell membrane tension, or first they unfold it, and then this other structure are stabilized. Maybe I have to study more. It is known to be a post-polylation. Yes. Yes, post-polylation. If it is post-polylated, it, it becomes to be closed. And if it's not post-polylated, it mm. remains as unclosed. So, Yes, so actually this ERM structure is postpolated, and then we can say that this ERM postpolation first, and then affecting and cell membrane tension later, or tension first, and... If it goes to mm. link between plasma membrane mm. and cortical actin, mm. uh, the ERM should be... Postpolated. Yeah, should mm. be open. Or, yeah, right, right. Yeah, but like what... what makes the, I mean, so there got to be an enzyme, right? The post-polylated. The mm -hmm. DNA is post-polylated because yes. the protein mm -hmm. has the post-polylation site on its C-terminal. Mm -hmm. 
So the kinase, so kinase just like what makes the kinase phosphorylate the ER? Mm -hmm. That's the condition of the environment in the cell context. Okay, under this question, <laughs> then just I want to share one uh, article. Actually, here they mentioned that membrane tension in cell influ influence of that skeleton. Membrane and membrane associated protein. So when we simply think about membrane tension, we, you, we, we can only imagine just cell lipid membrane tension itself. But here they mentioned that if we measure the membrane tension, three kind of things are combined. One is cortex, cortex at skeleton near below the cell membrane. The other one is that membrane itself. Membrane, membrane composition or membrane lipid fraction. And then the other one is a membrane associated protein, including EGM protein. So for measuring the membrane tension, they use two ways. One is optical tweezer, the other one is AFM to measure the membrane tension. So here they summarize membrane tension from many kinds of situation and cell. Okay, and then let's we, we need focus on let's say macrophage control cell membrane tension is around seventy, mm -hmm. but when they are differentiated in, into M1 LPS condition, they down, they go down. Yeah, fibroblasts like that. And in case of a microglia cell, also when they are M1 pluralized L, under LPS, they are going down. And then here, another cell type is when they add the azurine, the cell membrane link protein to stabilize, they are enhancing. Okay. And then when they knock down the azurine EGM protein, they go down. Okay. Here, it's control 30, and then azurine moisin or uh, vulporinos. Reduction of these two protein also they may go down or cell membrane tension. Then minus one also they are they have mutant go down when they add more going up membrane tension. And then also this myosin one when they go down knock down knock out they go down from T cell. So when we block the cytoskeleton element using cyto-D, LAD, and LAB go down, go down, even macrophage go down, ganglion neuron go down, neutrophil go down. Yeah. And then ARP23 inhibitor, we already know C CD, CK666 also, they can go down. And then marginal light chain kinase, kinase depletion go down. CDC42 go down. And then this MBCD, MBCD is sequester the lipid from the cell membrane to, to increase cell membrane tension. <laughs> so if we simply imagine when we treat this MBCD sequestering the lipid uh, lipid left in the cell membrane, we can imagine they increase or decrease the cell membrane tension, but Many people mentioned that when you treat a cell this MBCD because of sec secretion, sorry, sequestering the lipid left proteins, a uh, lipid left, they enhance the cell membrane tension. So MBCD treated, going up, going up, going up, and going up. And we can say that because lipid left is kind of um, some floating lipid. In the cell membrane, but when we sequester those lipid, bunch of lipid, the cell membrane lose their plasticity, so they can total, they can increase the cell membrane tension. And then this is the measurement how they measure the cell membrane tension from optical tweezer. Also, this method, cell stem cell paper, they use it. So this is a cell. This is some bead. And then using optical tweezer, they can approach 
and then after binding, they can detach. So from this detachment, they can measure the force. This is called trap force. Trap force high means that this binding between bead with RGD and this cell membrane, they have more resistance to external force. So trap force high means high cell membrane tension. And then this is um, naive pluripotent stem cell. They have high trap force which means they maintain the cell membrane tension high but while they are plating on 2D gelatin structure without this inhibitor they over time, this is 8 hour, 16 hour, 24 hour, 48 hour they are spreading red color, you can see many dots and black in cell also you can see and then while they are spreading, trap force is decreasing so they want to say that while they are spreading to some differentiate status, cell membrane and cell are losing their cell membrane force, cell membrane tension. This is the one, and then when you imagine this situation, this cell membrane and the under below, you can imagine some a cortical actin and the ERM protein and other membrane actin linking protein, and then myosin as well. So when you measure the cell membrane tension from this optical tweezer, this is this measure the total cell membrane tension. But this is another way to measure the cell membrane tension using this die. This is called flip TR staining die. So basically, when we using this die, this die is incorporating in the between cell membrane repeat, and then. From the membrane tension itself, we can measure the low and high membrane tension. But actually, and then here, some other article, they <coughs> measure the cell membrane, cell membrane tension depending on the stiffness. Increase of this nanosecond means higher cell membrane tension. So here, the macrophage is cultured on a stiff gel. They induce higher tension than soft. So this is the one, the other, another way to measure the cell membrane tension, but I'm not sure. This cell membrane tension is only measure the uh, lipid membrane tension, or this is also combining of all these three kind of three component, such skeleton and their link protein level. So, so, so as a summary, people think that when we think about the total surface tension, and then this is membrane repeat tension itself, cortical actin tension by actin and ectomyosin near membrane, and link molecule between membrane repeat, protein, and cortical actin. One of them is ERM protein. So this is the introduction of our ERM protein and so membrane tension. On the right panel, hmm? did, did they measure like that or? This is from another reference. This is another reference. This is another reference okay. from mm. the PNA, PNA, yes. So, actually, this one we cannot do at the moment. Mm -hmm. But this one we can do using our comfort machine. But uh, based on the, can you go a little down? Mm. The illustration, mm. it seems to measure only the, only the membrane. Membrane, right? Yeah, it seems they can only measure the membrane lipid tension mm -hmm. but I'm not sure they exactly decouple membrane lipid tension because also yeah the only lipid seems to be yeah but somehow this lipid also linking to other uh, linking protein and actin as well so I'm not sure this another accessory structure can give some membrane tension change or not but relatively Anyhow, this is measurement of cell, cell lipid membrane. Because, uh, can you go up, please? Yeah. The, the macrophages uh, on a stiff substrate, it, it generally spread more, right? Yes. And, and more spreading makes the cell hold tension, surface tension uh, down. Right. Here, they measure high. Yes, that, yeah. that, that means that only the, the membrane membrane tension 
Yeah, DP member tension. DP member yeah. tension. It could be. It could be. As a whole, the, the three components combined mm -hmm. makes the, the cells lower. Yeah. Tension maybe, but it, mm -hmm. it is opposite anyhow. The right, right. It's opposite. Right. The, 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 the reason is why the measurement is different from mm -hmm. the optical tweezer, right? Right. Mm -hmm. 요거는 그냥 멤브레인 자체만 음. 하는 걸로 생각이 되는데 사실 이 논문도 이제 this paper actually they very briefly mention even though they are using this figure as a main figure they want to say that actually from many people say that on stiff gel condition the rotation is high so for supporting that push that motion they using they are using this methodology but from our basic understanding it could be different from their exp explanation. Okay, let's jump up to our rear cell stem cell paper. So technically, they are using embryonic stem cell. And embryonic stem cell, when they maintain embryonic stem cell status, they have to use three inhibitors, 2I plus LIF, leukoplakia inhibitor something. And then, while these three inhibitor is in the media, they are maintained embryonic stem cell without any spreading, fine. But they remove the, this inhibitor. And then on gelatin coated cobosely, they are going to spread out. So while they're spreading out, they reveal this kind of cascade. Beta-catenin decreases. Beta-catenin is a whole macro of stemness of embryonic stem cell. And then beta-catenin low weight is well known. They are linking to each other. So beta catenin decrease, low weight decrease, and ERM activity, which is a phosphorylation decrease. And then membrane tension, because of this ERM phosphorylation decrease, membrane tension decrease, and then endocytosis enhance. So finally, ERK activity increase and fate transition happen. This is their finding. Let's see one by one. Here first. They, this is their media name, and then this three inhibitor. This is normal condition to maintain the ES cell on gelatin coated plate, 2D. And then when they remove this three inhibitor, only media, they are going to spread out spontaneously up to 48 hours. So they, call, they name it T16, 16 hours, removing, after removing this inhibitor, 24 and 48. And then under this condition, they are maintained spread. And then here, they maintain spherical structure. This is spread. So when you see it in detail, you can see this kind of black structure on the top of the cell membrane surface. And then reservoir, they mention reservoir means that somehow little floating. Black is some small sign of this kind of, they mention reservoir morphology they can, meet, they can detect. So they feel that, oh, might be on the spreading cell membrane tension decrease. So because they mentioned that blabbing and reservoir morphology, which are marker of cell membrane tension decrease. So they check this nano is ES stem cell marker and OTX2 is a differentiation marker. You can simply imagine. This is enhanced here. So there's their quantification. And then now, from this uh, idea, might be membrane tension decrease on spreading cell. They are using tweezer, optical tweezer and measure over time. And then they found out three different cell, cell types. One is round, relatively main, relatively yes-like cell. Blabbing, blabbing is in the between. Spread cell is spread cell. So gray color number decrease while blabbing blue color and red color is enhanced over time. And then when you quantify, select three different cells, round, blabbing, and spread cell, and when they measure the trap force, high, middle, down. So we can say that spreading cell have relatively lower tension than others. And then as people mentioned before that post for ERM, this is uh, activating of the ERM for unfolding protein. So while they're spreading post for ERM, 
decrease, which means that higher tension, phosphor ERM up, lower tension, cell member tension, phosphor ERM off. So they want to link the cell member tension and phosphor ERM on and off. So membrane tension is reduced in ES cell during early differentiation. <coughs> The next question is, how their, oh, what, ki what kind of force, what kind of thing can induce this kind of ES cell membrane tension decrease and early differentiation? They found beta catenin cause uh, from the, okay, I'll go back to supplementary. Here, actually, the two, two I is one of them is PD03, the other one is CHIR. So they, to know which kind of inhibitor is key for inducing cell spreading and membrane tension decrease, they individually remove one inhibitor and one, one inhibitor separately. And then when they remove this CHIRM inhibitor, the phosphor ERM level go down. But PDG3 remove on the remover, no change. So this CHIRM is important to regulate stem cell exit to differentiate status. The CHIRM is GSK, GSK3 beta inhibitor, which is very well known to regulate the beta catenin um regulation. So that is why a beta catenin regulation. So here that is, that is why they are choosing beta catenin knock, knockout cell. When they knock out beta catenin under inhibitor, which means maintain the stimulus, PRM decrease, which means cell membrane tension decrease. So they want to link beta catenin and phosphor ERM, cell membrane tension are highly linked each other. So on the beta catenin decrease, a knockdown, <coughs> very similar to the spreading without inhibitor condition. So this beta catenin knockdown, you can see, this is under inhibitor status, which means stemless media condition, but only beta catenin knockdown, knockout, but they are still decreasing the same member tension. And to link, this beta catenin is really necessary for same member tension regulation. They are using low way sensor using flat. So this is normal stemness. They are spreading differentiation. The beta catenin knockout differentiation condition. This low weight activity high in stem cell, but they are losing their flat signal under differentiation condition and even beta catenin knockdown condition. So this is their quantification. And then low weight active also from the western blood, they confirm beta catenin knockdown, they are going down. And then next, they want to enhance the low weight activity. Ah, sorry, this is a low weight inhibitor. Uh, ah, sorry, this is low weight constitutively activator. Uh, when they activate the low weight, this is a wild type, but when they induce more low weight, this PERM turning on. And then from cell member tension force, they are under uh, uh -huh. under differential condition, cell member tension goes down while low wave uh -huh. is highly activated or going on. So people here they want to link. Decrease in membrane tension during early differentiation is induced by beta-catenin and lower immediate decrease in ERM phosphorylation. And then next, okay, they they more specify the from the, this wild type cell and the while they are differentiate 48 hour uh, decrease membrane tension and then spreading the cell. And then here, they activate EGR, 
one of the ERM protein arginine here, <coughs> activating them, which means which can contribute to increase maintain the cell membrane tension as much as original stem cell. While they are culturing on the differential condition without inhibitor, they are maintaining the round shape. So they want to say that this ER, one of the ERM protein, arginine, is very important for maintaining the cell membrane tension here. So trap force decrease retreat under EGR high activation condition. And then for proving that, they are using mixture wild type plus EGR activating cell using M cherry. So this is uh, EGR activating cell here. They have high membrane tension. So, increase of nano stem cell marker, decrease of differentiation marker, while other cell change it. Other cell is a normal cell, wild type. So, while they are spreading, nano is disappear, and then only ATX2 is enhancing. This is their quantification. And then, as they replace this kind of mixture, so wild type cell. Where well, white cell is surviving depleted colony, this is a marker of embryonic stem cell marker. So when they are differentiated, this colony number decrease. But when they add the EGR protein, adrenaline protein, enhance. Why? This adrenaline can maintain the membrane tension. So from the RNA sequencing, they want, they want to confirm again. So this is a uh, bottom is wild type. Upper panel is arginine ac activating cell over normal state, normal ES condition, and then without inhibitor, 24 hour, without inhibitor, 48 hours, spreading condition, differential condition. All the conditions show that this naive pluripotency marker is enhanced in arginine activated cell. And then early post implantation and the general pore potency in the same manner. So they plot like PCA12. Here, wild type, arginine, and arginine CA here, but wild type 24 hour here. So they can show very much change between them. And then they, as a finer morphological feature, they check gastroid formation, say. From ESL, and then while it's really condition, how they are making this gastroid. In normal condition, they are spreading and they are making this kind of elongated feature. But under activating the adrenaline protein to maintain the cellular retention, they cannot elongate. So this is size and roundness is a measurement of this feature. So maintain the high membrane tension, impair early differentiation of stem cell. Which means when you maintain the high membrane tension of the stem cell, they are maintaining the stemless. But when you lose the membrane tension, they start to do differentiation. And then they are here they are using another platform. People will ask, okay, you are doing this platform to prove it, but how about if you use other platform? So this is a PEG gel that they confine the cell spreading area. This is a confined one, unconfined one, but they see the same cell number, 100 micrometer and 2550 micrometer. And then under differentiation media, without inhibitor, they check, they found out when they're unconfined, they're spread. And then nano will decrease, stemless decrease. But even though the media is differentiation media, when they are confined, when they maintain the round shape, nano is, is maintained. So which means that not only the cell membrane, cell shape, but also the cell membrane tension is the key for maintaining the stemness. Here they want to decouple the cell membrane shape, I mean, cell shape and cell membrane tension, which one is the key for maintaining the stemness. So from this platform, they confirm. Cell membrane shape is not 
the most primary factor. Remember, tension is a primary factor. <laughs> so for proving that, <coughs> they measure the track force, confined one, upper com up confined one, can maintain the track force, even differential media. Unconfined, they are spreading, spreading one, they are losing the same member tension. Nano? Yeah, you can simply imagine. And here, they check laminin and ecadrine. Previously, they are using gelatin. But laminin and ecadrine, interestingly, interestingly, these two, uh, these two protein coating, they are, even in ESL, they are losing their spreading. They are, even though they are maintaining the stemness, the same morphology is quite spreading than gelatin one. So under this condition, when they check the trap force, this laminin, ecadrine, ES means ES condition with inhibitor. T24 hour is ES med uh, differential media without inhibitor. Trap force decreasing. So they continuously decouple not cell morphology, but cell membrane tension is key for regulating, regulating the stemness. The membrane tension reduction that cell spreading is responsible for gating early differentiation. Maybe as your last two, almost last figure. So here, now they are treating dextran, pH sensitive dextran. So they want to know, okay, membrane tension is a key. And how membrane tension decrease can make cell differentiation better. So they already, from the literature survey, they found out that when membrane tension decrease and low A decrease, a lot of endocytosis can happen. So for proving that, this pH sensitive fluorescent dextran is treated to the cell. ES cell and differential cell, they found out that this dextran is more deposited on this spreading cell, like that, their quantification. And then when they block, the endocytosis using this CPG, PSTAP2, and dinosaur, all of them are endocytosis inhibitor. And then this dextran uptake decrease. While they're decreasing, what happened to their stemness? Their stemness, uh, here, this DMSO, which means their differentiation condition, or differentiation condition, but when they block the endocytosis, or recover the stemness, right? So which means that endocytosis is one of the key sequence from the cell membrane tension decrease. But cell membrane or cell looks or similar to the spreading condition, but when they block endocytosis, stemness is maintained. This is your quantification. And then differentiation marker OTX2 are relatively decreased in this endocytosis inhibitor. And then here, they want to go further. Okay, this is normal differential condition. And then they activate azurin. Okay, and even activate azurin, they activate endocytosis. So aura are this differential condition. Aura is stemless condition. This two is stemless condition. Yeah, sorry, aura is stemless condition, but here they enhancing the stemness by cell membrane tension increase. And here they further increase endocytosis. So they found out that endocytosis is enhanced in this lab 5 a Lab 5 a is key endocytosis pathway. <laughs> so when they enhance more, endocytosis, endocytosis can happen better. Under, under this condition, when they check the nano structure, endocytosis is enhancing even in high membrane tension, nano is decreasing. So they want to say that endocytosis is a real key <laughs> consequence from the cell membrane tension increase. So endocytosis, the endocytosis regulate early differentiation. Okay, so this is the last. And then, okay, so we come to know that beta-catenin 
and phospho ERM, and then <laughs> endocytosis. So here, as a final biological pathway, what kind of biological pathways involved? So they, from the literature survey, they just shot, shotgun this phospho ERK. So wild type, while they are spreading, phospho ERK is maintained. But, phospho ERK is maintained, but this azurin activates cell condition, phospho ERK is a little decreased. So when they check phospho ERK, wild type, and then it's azurin, they should always post-perk wipe type is higher than azurin activated cell. So here, wild type 24 spreading cell, differential cell, high OTX2, but azurin, same reputation high, OTX2 down, and then when they use ERK activator, this ARC is activated, OTX2 is enhanced. So they want to say that while their differentiation, ARC should be phosphorylated. This is wild type is, mm, this is relatively maintained as stemmist, but wild type is, they are going differentiation. This is their quantification. And then endosomal ARC, they want to know the detailed ARC activation using this flash sensor. So they found out that round cell have low flash signal while spread cell have high flash signal which means high ERK activation. So ERK activator is important for making differentiation of stem cell. When they live imaging the ERK flash signaling time from three inhibitor remover this 17, 17 hour later, suddenly, while the cell is spreading, flat ratio is dramatically enhanced. When they measure the roundness spread, spread is more high, has higher flat ratio. And then this is their another normalization. So yeah, this so also here, ESL stemness, high stemness, low. ARC signaling. When they are differentiated, high ARC signaling. When they enhance the other in cell membrane tension, low ARC signaling. Here, they added the endocytosis increase, high ARC signaling. So from this assay, they, want, they are making these chemical images. Normal stemmies, they are maintaining the high cell tension while they are maintaining the spherical shape and then while they are differentiated, blabbing, cell spreading, then beta-catenin degradation, decrease of low weight, decrease of post-ERM, and membrane tension decrease, then which is enhance the increase of cytosis and enhance activation of ERK and exit from naive Per potency to differentiate the cell. So this is their final figure. <coughs> okay. <coughs> yes. Uh, during early differentiation process, mm. he also said uh, endocytosis is important. Right. So what kind of factors do say uptake or get by endocytes? What kind of what kind of endocytes pathway? No, no, what kind of factors do ah. say ah. uptake or get by endocytes? And here they just simply mention that a uh, decrease of low weight and then decrease of cell membrane tension is already known to enhance endocytosis. And then they just check this, check this one. That's the only answer I can do. So do you also don't know what kind of factor mm. is in endosome, right? Yes, yes. They don't know. But they just mentioned that might be in supplementary when you go, they mentioned an FGF, basic FGF, mm. can be one of the things.
Yeah, so I was also mm. wanting to ask about the endocytosis. So mm. why endocytosis happens? Is that like mm. compensatory reaction mm. that the like, cell membrane tension is just suddenly decreased? Mm. So that like, endo they have to do the endocytosis to increase the cell membrane tension or something? Mm, yeah. I was just thinking like more like physical mm. compensatory reaction. Right, right. Maybe uh, that can be one reason. Yeah, because they are losing their cell membrane tension, so they want to compensate them. For that, maybe they want to uptake more and more to maintain the cell membrane tension. Yeah, that could be. Yeah, in a physical view. So I have one more question. Mm -hmm. uh, in my knowledge, mm -hmm. when cell is spreading, mm -hmm. grow rate mm -hmm. is activated. Yes. But right, in right. this paper, right. they said when cells are spreading during the early differentiation, mm -hmm. OA is inactivated. Right, right. Could, could you explain the difference in this phenomenon? Yeah, actually, that's my another curiosity because we already know that from the methylchemical stem cell, uh, they are, while they are spreading on soft and stiff, stiff, a relatively high low weight or high cell tension, which is our understanding, basic. But here, I'm, I'm not sure, but this is maybe depending on the cell type. Mm. But when we observe the already differential cell, even the mesochemical stem cell, and then their differentiation to the <coughs> final differentiated cell could be different from this condition. That's the only thing I can do, only thing I can answer. Ro Rowe is very critical for the act acting polymerization. Mm -hmm. So the the in the rounding cells mm -hmm. on differentiated cells, mm -hmm. they mainly the cortical cortical actins are, are the major. Okay? Mm -hmm. So Rowe is involved in the in the formation of the cortical actin. Mm -hmm. But uh, when cells spread, the cortical actin decreases, mm -hmm. but uh, it, it moves to the cytoskeletal actin. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, uh, the mm -hmm. two kinds of cells, the, the number of actins may not be so different, mm -hmm. but the position, okay, and type of the actins may be different. Or, or the number may be different, but that, that, that may be very important, the, the, the Q, what they found, okay, when cells spread, Mm -hmm. Generally, people know that the raw age is in, increased, but here they, they found it, it, it's decreased. Mm -hmm. That made them uh, curious about what happened. So the, the main, main point is that the, the surface acting, mm -hmm. quarter acting. Mm -hmm. The Roy Roy is involved in, in the cortical acting here when they are round. Mm -hmm. Spreading them as well. When cells spread more cytoskeletal actins may develop, but there is not not newly produced may be transferred from the quarter active to the cytoskeleton, yeah, possibly. Right. Maybe if, for answering those questions, maybe we can imagine that we only observe, <coughs> let's say, differentiation soft, differentiation stiff. When they check two different conditions, while they're spreading, might be stiffness can increase low weight. But when we really compare to the round cell, Maybe like that, they can show higher than other spreading cells. But I'm not sure. It's really happening or not? I'm not sure, but I think mm. the in spreading cell, mm. the tension of cortical actin is higher than spherical cell because spherical mm. is a smaller mm. area, mm. and spreading cell is the like a wider mm. area. So mm. it means the wider means the tension of actin is more. Higher than right, right, right. Do you think? So yeah, yeah. I, I think this is not match. Yes. In like a, in like a physical content. Yeah, right. Okay. So I think the one thing I can get it. This is ES stem cell, very high stem cell, 
then they are literally differentiate. So maybe these differentiation cell, we can just say all the differentiation, this there, this cell is not that much contracted cell. So maybe they are not enough to induce exercise skeleton for doing something. But when we measure the MSC, this is not like that, around here. And then fibroblast here, very differential cell. If we see this low weight phenomenon, that can be different from this condition. This is depending on their stainless hierarchy. Just my imagine. Uh, Professor mm -hmm. Shalut, like, uh, explain about, we can simply imagine that there's like a very big balloon and then mm -hmm. it just bursts and then it just suddenly lose their volumes and then, you know, high surface tension just decrease mm -hmm. by bursting it. So that's why the membrane tension is decreased. So he explained mm -hmm. like that, right? Yeah, in the lecture, right? Yeah, so mm -hmm. I just wonder whether they ever check the vol volumes of the cells. Ah, volume they never check here. Because based paper. on the scale bar in the figure mm. 1a, it one seems a. like the spherical cell don't seem like, like very large as compared to the spreading ones. Mm. The scale bar is 10 micrometer. Yes. So the like spherical one look, like seems smaller than this spreaded one. But they never mentioned about the Z scale, yeah, G so I don't know how, so I just wonder whether they ever measure about the volume. Because I also thought the same, you know, thing that oh, why the spread cell has like low mm. some membrane tension, mm. but he like described about that situation, right? Like mm. big balloon just burst and then mm. lose the surface tension. So he mentioned in the lecture, big volume has relatively low membrane tension, right? Mm, high tension. High tension. Yeah. Uh, just this is higher volume than this. Uh, they, he did not mention uh, about the volume, but mm. I thought, why mm. the cell membrane tension decreased? Mm. So I thought maybe, I mean, like, like he described, mm. if the spherical, you know, big balloon mm. cell burst and then lose their volume, then mm. they, that's why the cell membrane tension decreased, right? If they maintain the cell, same cellular mm. volume, mm. then like cell membrane tension should be similar. Mm -hmm. So on the stiffer substrate, maybe like cell spontaneously, like directly, like involved to build, build or develop the actins. Mm. But in this situation, they may, I don't know, maybe passively, mm. you know, transit their, uh, I don't know, uh, the cytoskeleton rearrangement or something. That's mm. why mm. The, their behavior is different from the cells, like culture on like different stiffer substrate. Right. Yes, they didn't do the acting statement. Then why why they doesn't didn't mention about the acting in this paper? Mm. Uh, why? So when I just imagine they try to do acting staining, but acting is not that much strong. Strong to detect. Very smear, okay, smear. So they didn't mention at all about the acting. So they I, I don't know the yeah, they group the Charlotte, uh, Kevin, Kevin's group is mainly mm -hmm. working in the stem cells and very early developmental cells. So in that case, the, the actin doesn't develop much within the cytoskeleton. As I told you that the mainly the cortical actin is very important. Among other actins, there are several kinds of actins. If a cortical uh, actin is important, then they should check or show the, should show by the stain. Possibly they did somewhere, but they may know about that. Uh, ah, here. Uh, ah, sorry. They sorry. Here they do actin. Mm. Yes. Uh, actually, but they didn't check the actin intensity. But they only show them. Ah, uh, here. Yeah, only. Cortical actin, we can see, right? Mm. Mm. Yeah, right, right. Yes, yes. Mainly the cortical actins mm. are Sorry. important. So the Rowe Rowe is 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 only involved in the cortical actins, not cytoskeletal actins. Mm. Cortical actins decreased, right? Oh, uh, actually, they didn't. Not much. They didn't mention at all. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Uh, because you know that the, not not the cortical actin itself, but the E E R N. Mm. Link molecules are more important here. Mm. There are three components: membrane, 
yeah, mm -hmm. itself, mm -hmm. and the the cortical actin, mm -hmm. amount of cortical actin, and, yeah. and also ERM. Yeah. Right. But they focus here the ERM. Yeah. ERM yeah. focuses because among yeah. ERM, they they found E is important. Right? Yes. E phosphorylation is important. 그러니까 yeah. 지금 여기서 뭐냐 among among others, membrane itself, cortical actin and ERM, they focus ERM here, right? Mm. 그렇잖아, 그지? Right. ERM numbers. Protein oh, quantity is same, but phospho ERM on the phospho phospho ERM. Yeah. On three B six, no, like the T twenty four reading cells they didn't show. Yeah, yeah, only T sixteen. But T sixteen twenty four could be similar. Because why they check T sixteen? T sixteen they have three different cell morphology. You can see at a single time point. The same. 16 hours later, but some cells are round, spread, and bred. So while, while they're observing this, the possible ERM is different depending on the cell morphology. So cell, cell mem we, didn't, uh, we, we didn't consider the cell membranes is very important before, but it becomes very important at the moment. But it, this is also context dependent. A certain kind of cell, this is quite crucial, critical, but in certain kind of, the other kind of cells may not. Can, uh, your, your context is mm. early developmental cells, so cortical actin is mm -hmm. mm -hmm. important. Then membrane tension is very important. You may have, have read the different other papers of, of the same group. Mm -hmm. yeah, they also they also show the similar behaviors in the other kind of cells. Yeah, I don't think Fibroblast, we don't want to jump to that part. Not, mm -hmm. not, not that much in the fibroblast mm -hmm. or highly differentiated cells. What, what lessons can you derive? Yes, so from... Look at my key point. Yeah, key point is that oh, when, we, when we see some difference, when we see the morphological difference in 3D structure, maybe when we encapsulate the macrophage or stem cell in 3D, maybe cell morphology change can be one of them. And then even though the morphology is not that much change, but when you see this kind of bread blabbing, then this could be a marker of cell member tension decrease. So, uh, so blabbing structure can be one of the candidates you can observe. And then we already know that actin, we are familiar with that, but not only actin, this uh, actin cell membrane linker, ERM protein, can be one of your target to, to know what kind of phenomenon occur in your context. And then yes, these two things. Ah and then MBCD. MBCD is one of the uh, one of the molecules to increase the retention. So in 3D structure on 2D if we want to link so same retention is important to your context. MBCD is same retention enhancer. That is NSC is same retention decreaser. So these two molecule, I I get it from this from this paper. Today, but this one membrane lipid membrane tension or something like that. Not not just lipid membrane tension. But when they treat this MBCD. To sequester the lipid left, the trap force is enhanced here. Got you? Lipid, uh, there are three ways and uh, three ways to increase the surface tension. Mm. One is the by changing the membrane lipid composition. composition. Mm. This is the one. This is that way. Mm. Okay, by incorporating lipid left inside of the, the membrane. Okay, good enough. To remove the or, lipid left or remove. Okay, you're gonna the membrane itself. Another way is to, to to 
to touch the the cortical cortical art activities. Mm. 그 방법도 있잖아. Cortical activity. Cortical activity remover. Remove 하거나. Lade cytokine. Yes yes. NSC is actually azurin inhibitor. 그러니까 그런 거세 가지 다 있잖아. 음. 그 지금 그 얘기 해줘야지. 음. There are three ways. One is 계속 그 계속 반복되는 거야. 음. How to change the surface tension? 음. Increase or decrease? 음. There are three ways. One, mm. membrane itself, ERN, nick molecule, 그리고 안쪽에 있는 actin, uh, cortical actin. Mm. 그렇게 얘기해. Mm -hmm. 이게 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 다가 아니고. Mm -hmm. This is one one way. Mm. 그럼 계속 얘기하지만, in your experiments, mm. uh, when do we have to think, consider the surface tension more important? We can keep it. This mm. is one one key question. Mm. Okay. When you observe some 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 behavior in your cells, different behaviors, and is the surface tension really important? Then uh, what kind of experiment do you do you have to design? So second is, what kind of experiment can you do then to prove it? Mm -hmm. Is it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, surface tension is very important. Mm -hmm. It composed of three components. Okay. Yes, this one. Yeah. <coughs> okay, here's the macrophages. Let's think about, take one example. The, the, you culture macrophages, okay? And under LPS condition or under stiff substrate, macrophage changes. How how it changes, okay? Morphologically changes, actin, cytoskeletal, or cortical actin distribution number. So possibly surface actin changes. What kind of experiment can you do further? Not just the previous hour previous methods, but then uh, how important the surface tension then in driving the macrophages, polarization, or yeah, other behaviors? may not be so important. Not, not all cases, not to all cases, but some cases, it may be very critical, especially here, the stem cells, ES cells, differentiate very early stage. The surface tension is very important, not inside the cytoskeletal component. Even though the shape changes from spherical, purple spherical to yeah, spreading cells, not many organisms change the inside of the cytoskeletal cytosomes. The critical is the surface tension. That that changes something. What what changes the endocytosis? Mm -hmm. So the surface tension and endocytosis is, is very much linked between. So did you reduce the surface tension okay allows endocytosis uh, and exocytosis more and more. This is well known. This is well perceived. Your concept is very clear. Endocytosis is a person or exocytosis is a person. The mechanobiology is one of the mechanobiology areas. Endocytosis. So this is very pretty, pretty much well known. So, the surface tension and endocytosis are completely linked. 그래서 이 사람은 뭐냐면 surface tension이 중요하다고 봤기 때문에 그러면 what what can change then uh, stem cell ES cell to differentiate cell endocytosis. The surface tension of endocytosis will be able to do more than already exist. Already exist.
나는 혹시 저기 엔도사이토시스라고 할때 그간 서피스에 존재하는 어떤 중요한 키가 되는 뭐 어떤 리셉터 중에서 이렇게 좀 찍어서 할줄 알았는데 그건 아닌 것 같아요. Not, not very specific receptors on the cell membrane. Actually, they check one receptor here. F, J, F. Sorry, very nice. F, J, two, two. F, J, two. F, J, receptor one. They check from the ES cell. F, J, receptor one is well known to regulate the ES tenderness. So here. They check internalized FJ receptor one. So under this artery, yeah, sorry, high membrane tension, internalized one decrease, but where the differentiate internalized increase, which means that FJ receptor one is key for key for exit exiting the stemness. Full importance, the FJ. F셉, 베이직 F셉 very important 한데 그거에 리셉터 중에 하는 것 같아 요게 가면 스탬스에서 빠진다, 디퍼런스에서 간다 이렇게 얘기했어 그러니까 우리 예를 들면 지금 그 매크로파즈 같은 경우는 뭐 톨라드 리셉터도 있죠 지난번에 왜 TLR 리셉터 이렇게 멀지 되고 하는 논문도 있었잖아 서비스 텐션하고 이제 엔도사이티스 굉장히 가깝고 서비스 리셉터 중요하다 So I have one question. Do you have any idea how we can measure the internalized FJF receptor one using ICC? They, they just briefly mention FJF internalized one. They 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 measure from the ICC, but I didn't know how they how they can do it. Internalized FJF receptor one. But the amount is similar, but internal internalized one is different. Any specific? Treatment, treatment X100. Okay, so zoom 오늘 하고. So we will do continue this kind of lectures in the future.